Welcome everyone to Unscripted Coding. Today you see the homepage for AutoHotKey in front of you, and we're gonna be playing around a little bit with it, but let me just go through the project, the motivation here. A couple weeks ago, we did a quick Android demonstration using an auto clicker to show how you can build something that clicks through a series of menus to automatically order something very, very simply, basically by building macros. You don't always need to use APIs. You don't have to code. You don't have to do all of these things to build an app, to build a service. Sometimes you can go as simple as just a macro to get something done. And what I found chatting with other people is that macros are still very much alive as uh, professional consulting services. There are still lots and lots of companies that use old um, data frames, old applications that, that don't connect easily with other, that don't play friendly with other applications, modern applications. So what they're reduced to are using macros basically, or as a term today is robotic process uh, automation. RPA. And so I wanted to see what is out there for Windows computers. And what I found is that AutoHotKey gets recommended over and over and over. Now, I'm going to be honest. I had always thought AutoHotKey was one of these random um, macro builders that you might see for MMOs, for uh, games that you need to do a lot of grinding with. But it seems like it's quite sophisticated. So I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit here. You can see that it is a scripting language and you can have it type a series of keys, um, copy and, and use the clipboard. Uh, there's a very simple GUI for you to take advantage of and you can even interact with um, some elements. And what we're going to do today is actually download, install it, and play around with it, see what it can do. Can it, I don't know, automatically check out something from Amazon? Can it interact with Microsoft Office? Those are the questions that are going through my mind right now when I look at this. Now, there are other alternatives on Windows. Uh, so we have talked previously about using Arduinos that uh, you can plug into a USB port and very consciously move the cursor to certain coordinates, click, right click, click the keyboard. Um, you also have uh, very fancy keyboards, uh, not this one actually, that have macro functions built in. So if you have Logitech or Razer keyboards, some of them have a series of keys on the side that you can click and it says macro one, macro two. Um, but we're going to be using auto hotkey. So let's get started. Um, what I wanna do is look at the documentation very quickly. And what I found well, let's take a look at Script Showcase. But what I found very interesting is that I kept thinking this is a mouse and keyboard thing, but you can see that you can uh, go and do things to the file and directory. So you might be able to create, rename, um, reorder files. That is incredibly helpful. Um, we have flow of control, uh, so I guess that's standard programming. Uh, you can create your own GUI, it seems like. And I wonder, I, I think it can figure out certain things on your screen. So um, let's take a look here. Mouse gestures, uh, easy window dragging, joystick as a mouse. Um, Okay, let me go back here. I saw something earlier that was very, very promising, and I wanna see if I can find it for you. No. Nope. Um, one moment here, process, no, nope. screen. Oh, uh, I've always loved this one. You can find uh, pixel colors, so you could go and see pixels. 
Um, depending on how you do it, I've always thought uh, you can build a macro and you can see, for example, right here where my mouse is pointing. If it's black, then you can kind of figure out what text it is. Let's say you're looking for a no or a yes. You can find, you know, outside the range of no, but in the range of yes, because there's more characters. If it's black versus yellow, you know uh, what text has popped out. But you gotta have a very good sense of what things, what the possibilities are, what the possible outcomes are. But um, what I'm trying to see is controls, maybe? When menu. Okay, I'll have to figure it out. I'll have to take a look at it and, and start building something to see. But what I wanted to say is that um, it seems like for certain apps, I, I guess more modern apps, you're able to see that, say, there's a button over here. You can say the third button or the fourth button. Um, I've seen this on Android as well. You have a very modern built app. It can kind of scroll through the options because it knows there are certain buttons, there's an image, there's a text or whatever. Now, Windows obviously has a very long legacy, lots of ways to build apps. So I imagine that doesn't work for every single app, especially if you go, you know, 20 years back to find, I don't know, mine or Minesweeper. Yeah, I was going to say Minecraft, but Minesweeper from 1998 or something. Um, you might not have all those components, but uh, I, I can't seem to find it in this, um, this very long list. But uh, we're, we're going to try it out. I'm going to stop talking and we'll come right back. Welcome back. I spent about a half hour trying to build this very, very simple um, example. And really what I've done is gone through their quick tutorial, their quick start tutorial, and took some of the major lessons to be learned. But what I find very interesting is that AutoHotKey has its own forum right in their main web page. And you can see all of the very, um, very sophisticated programs that other people are building. Um, you can imagine there are very significant ways for you to change uh, certain texts that you keep typing, uh, certain short phrases, uh, all the way to changing how your mouse behaves and acts on the computer just by seeing uh, various things. If I can kind of divert your attention very quickly, um, the app has two built-in tools. One is it converts it to an EXE. So uh, you, you have all of your text, that's critical, all of your script, and it'll convert it to an EXE that you can run on other computers, you can use it in a thumb drive. 
Um, but the more interesting one is that there is this window spy that will tell you what the window you're looking at, what the title, what the title is, um, what the class is, what the process is, blah, blah, blah. Um, it can tell you where your mouse position is, what the color is. All of that is super useful information because that's what you're going to be using to switch between tabs to find out where your mouse is, what color you're looking at. All of this information is super, super useful. So uh, really helpful, especially early on when I didn't really know what, what I was doing. Uh, we'll turn that off for now um, and go to our very, very simple example here. Can, well, we'll leave that here. Um, let me just... Well, uh, not cooperating, but we'll just zoom in here. Hopefully we can all read that. Okay, so first of all, uh, this hot auto hotkey allows you to have variables. Um, in this case, I have output variable one and two. This is stolen straight from there example and you can actually have an input box so when i run it there's a really quick input box and you can collect a bunch of different things and this is useful for me because i keep thinking about how i can use this in an office setting and if i want to fill out a very quick form for example uh, there may only be two or three things I want to ask. What your name is, what the other person's name is, maybe today's date, and then, you know, the whole document gets filled out with standard text. Um, when you fill out this information, what will pop up is a message box. So thank you. Um, and then it's going to fill things out. Now I had a Windows uh, Word box already, so it was a problem. It tried to fill out this one. But if I were to close this <coughs> and run it all over again, oops, and answer the questions on the side, of course, it's going to run it on a different page except Again, I still have another Word document running on the side, so <clears throat> let's not go there for now. So you have input boxes, two of them, and then you have an output box. Next thing you can do is run different applications. You can run it so that you have your C drive to pro, uh, program files to Steam, Steam apps, whatever folder, and, and get to any specific application you want. So you can run Slack, you can run WordPress, the uh, no, that's not an app. Um, Microsoft Word, Photoshop, Publisher, whatever you want. Uh, in this case, you want to actually what I think of as focus your attention, focus uh, onto the right uh, application. So right now I have um, VS Code running. I want to switch the focus to Microsoft Office, Windows Word, um, and we'll do this by activating it, wait until it's active. I would even put in a sleep if I can, um, but let's not do that. And then what we're going to do is send, uh, I randomly clicked a place, and then we're gonna send hello, output variable two, so that second person's name, enter, gonna go control B to bold the message, you should watch Unscripted Coding on YouTube. Unbold it, click enter, sincerely enter, and then the next person's name. So you can draft a very simple letter very quickly. And all of this is triggered when you click. Uh, when you see this arrow, it means control, control J. So I'm gonna go control J. We're gonna see these pop-up boxes. And cheat a little bit because I keep forgetting to close the last item. But over here, 
uh, this is what it would look like. And went click and then typed up this little bit here. So what I'm finding right now is I wonder why the timing is just a bit different. So you might want to do a quick wait um, in between. So let me see if there's a sleep function. I think I saw sleep. So uh, sleep, and this is in milliseconds. And I might put them between each one. And we're going to use this converter again, convert, reload, all good. Then I am going to go control J and send Bob. And over here, so still some oddity here. It's not perfect, but I am using version two beta. Um, all in all, um, this is really quite simple. Um, it, it takes very little time to understand um, why they've done their hotkeys, why they've done their syntax this way. Um, it's much simpler than that Arduino project we did, I think. Um, and there's a nice simple EXE, so uh, it's, it's nice to be able to pass this around to friends and say, plug it in, trust me, it's not any virus, but it's going to do something cool, uh, versus sending a file, which I guess is the same kind of security concerns. But um, you can very quickly automate a whole bunch of things. I remember I used to do this with MMOs way, way, way back. And there were some very unsophisticated programs where it would let you click various places. And I would always try and see if that particular pixel was green for, say, a slime, or red for the background color, or some other color to indicate what I should be doing. You can get fairly sophisticated. I had no clue what I was doing, so uh, it didn't work very well. But uh, this is this is a really interesting way to do it. And there's this huge community that is building all sorts of things to automatically highlight, inject, um, type out text. Anyways, I hope you found that useful. Um, I certainly will be using this in the future very soon. So um, we'll, we'll chat again fairly soon in the next video.